This episode of Two Guys Who Dive, recorded live Saturday, 19 January 2013, episode 51, Dive Different. <clears throat> and welcome once again to another episode of Two Guys Who Dive, and I'm your host Rob Wade, and I'm here with... Robert Garza. And also, I'm guest, uh, guested with uh, Graza, and behind me is Ronan. <laughs> they absolutely insisted on participating in the podcast tonight, so uh, <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah. Now, I got to say, if y'all hear some weird noises tonight, uh, it's likely because... Robert's of, stomach, he didn't yeah, eat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I haven't had dinner, that's oh, true. Oh, my gosh. Um, but we've got some neighbors down the... T- this is my pet peeve. Got some neighbors down the block here that decided tonight to have some sort of a, uh, I don't know, a block party or yard party or something. So I'm sitting here doing the final show prep just before you got into the studio and I hear, I'm like, oh no. So I, you know, at first I thought maybe it was a boom car because we have those crews by our yeah. neighborhood all the time. And I'm wishing, you know, every time that happens, I wish I had a uh, EMP rifle <laughs> so I can hit their vehicle with it so it all loses all the, the electrical capability, all the electronics <clears> dies <throat> on it. But uh, no, uh, so I open up the back door and just a few houses down, they've got it blaring loud. So I'm like, oh, please, Lord, don't let that go on through the hole. Because it, it shakes the windows oh, wow. when these people do this. So you would hear it over the microphones. I was like, you could hear it over the headset because all you hear was, <laughs> it was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I got my, uh, I got my uh, handy dandy flashlight here. It's my little, when noises go on and I, but it's like, it's LED, but it's like really, really bright. I mean, this thing is, <laughs> you can land aircraft with it. It's as bright as some of our uh, dive lights. And, uh, so I got it out there and I'm shining it in their backyard <laughs> <laughs> to make my point that you don't need it this loud, especially as we're getting into the evening here. So that's correct. I was like, come on. You know, we had we back in the day when we had our band red handed and our what's now our living room used to be our garage and we used to practice there. But we made sure that the volumes weren't crazy. And of course. We had everything uh, as quiet. We had the the room quieted mm-hmm. as much as possible, but uh, you know, of course, at ten o'clock, absolutely, we yeah. cut it all off. You know, and we made sure that our, you know our neighbors weren't. You know, we didn't get calls on us or anything. But I'm like, this was in the backyard, blaring as loud as they could get their system, and it was just crazy. So I'm like, people. So luckily, they're not doing anything right now, but. Uh, you yeah, never, I was, I was you about never to know. say it's kind of quiet right now. Yeah, you never know. I mean, it just stopped just before you got here. So, uh, th- of course, that doesn't mean they won't start up again because we have some people uh, a couple blocks out. Well, actually, the next block over here on the street, the, in their backyard, they have parties like every other weekend. Oh. And they have it blurring for the neighborhood to hear. I tell I'm you. like, come on. You don't <laughs> rent a place. Rent the Civic Center <laughs> or something. Go out to the lake or whatever, but uh, come on. So now that I got that all uh, out of off my chest, <laughs> so how was your how was your week? Uh, painful, painful. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, I had hip surgery. Uh, they, you know, it's uh, hip to be square. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I had an appointment on Wednesday. They were gonna remove a uh, a lymphoma from my hip. Uh huh. So uh, I. I had just made the appointment. It it was, you know, I've had it for a while and it slowly had started getting a little bit bigger. Had the test done. It wasn't cancerous. It was a kind of a, thank a, God. A, that's awesome. Yes. A kind of a fatty tumor. And I was getting concerned because it, it was kind of hurting on like at night when I would sleep. Yeah. I would sleep on it. It's placing I, pressure in places you're not supposed to have pressure. Exactly. <laughs> right, you know, right. so my leg would wake up numb and I, I really started kind of worrying about it. Uh, so went to the doctor for a, for a physical and I kind of showed it to him. He goes, yeah, let me refer you to, um, um, right. a doctor that can take care of that for you. Well, <laughs> I went in Wednesday and I thought, okay, well, it's just going to be just so that he can look at it and, and see 
you know, you know, I kind of thought he was going to go through the whole thing. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and set you up for an appointment so right, that you can come right. in and we can remove it. Not even. Uh, I really was not expecting this. His nurse came in with a tray and just said, okay, uh, turn on your side. and <laughs> We're going to take care of this right and here. And he kind of just started. Wow. He goes, yeah, what you feel is the iodine. <laughs> so I was like. Oh, oh, I remember the whole iodine thing when I, I got my vasectomy. Yes. I was like, you're going to do this right now? He goes, yeah, unless you don't want to. I go, well, I guess now's as good a time as any. So basically it was an outpatient procedure, yeah, which is so, great. Uh, you know, the only thing that hurt, of course, if you ever had local anesthesia, just the burning. Yeah. And then, um, it's ju- of course, it just burns for a little, a brief second or two. Right. And then uh, you don't feel numb. anything. Yeah, right, it's numb. Right. So it, it numbs really quick. So um, Wow. So there you go. I had it cut out. The only thing is it it's, it's kind of... Uh, and he had told me it was going to be a little tender, of course. And then I saw him sticking his finger inside my hip. Kind of making sure he got everything out. You know, that's got to be freaky. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, uh, I know this is going to hurt tomorrow. Uh, so, Just making uh, an adjustment there. Yeah, so uh, anyway. Wow. That, that's what happened. So Thursday, which was the day of the dive meeting, yeah. I, I really was yeah. real sore from the hip. And um, I, I was moving, and of course I was oozing because... <clears throat> Moving and a oozing. Yeah, that sounds was, like a song from the 80s <laughs> I or was maybe a, the 70s. I was oozing. So, um, yeah, I was not a happy camper. Today, I feel wow. a lot better. Uh, yesterday, I was feeling good. Today, I feel much better. So they give you any special meds for that? No, just uh, Advil. Oh, over-the-counter stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's no fun. Yeah, they were like, uh, no worries. No uh, you can go back to work tomorrow, <laughs> you know. And then he started. Could looking. I get a doctor slip? <laughs> yeah, well, he actually looked at it because he, he had. I said, "Is there any downtime that I that I should be aware of?" Right. Because I have to make arrangements, and he was like, "No, there should be none." But <laughs> yeah. then when he actually performed the procedure, it was a little bit bigger than he had thought. Yeah. So he, he actually had to do stitches in underneath, not just on the top layer. So he said, "You know what? Just go ahead and take a couple of days." There you go. And I told him, "Well, I don't work on the weekends." He goes, "Perfect." So he gave me for a Thursday and Friday off. Nice. Yeah. So nice. that was. That was good. And so here we are. Now, when can you get back to your bike riding? Uh, actually, uh, I, I went this morning for just a not quick, real strenuous. No, but, no, not yeah. not in t- not like actual exercise riding yeah. or distance riding. I just went around the neighborhood and and I actually felt pretty good. So I don't want to. I definitely you know ain't gonna push it. Right, exactly. You know, I, I'll wait till they remove the stitches. In <laughs> you 10 know days. that that's a thing that we do, and this re- this is a kind of a cautionary t- tale, especially for divers too. Is you know, if you have an issue that that waylaid you, you know, from so, any kind of exercise, mm-hmm. certainly from diving, mm-hmm. that you know, we have a tendency to stop taking the meds or stop doing whatever the the. Uh, uh, whatever the whatever the treatment is that the the doctors are telling us to 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 stick with, as soon as we stop the feeling the pain, or as soon as we start feeling good, not realizing that the regimen is probably uh, meant to go well beyond that. It's like okay, right. don't just stop taking these meds or or lay off the ex you know the extra exercise or strenuous activity, um, and for three weeks or whatever you know oh i feel good after a week and a half we end up uh paying the piper after it's all said and done yeah because we're we're we we're we may feel good but there's a lot of stuff still going on yes you know? yeah uh, so. well it's the same thing like when they tell you you know take penicillin you know it's for 10 days right. some people for me personally um i tend to start feeling pretty good when am i antibiotics Oof. about two or three days <clears throat> It's after I've taken yeah. it, but yet I still got to go a full other week. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I already feel good. So, but you have to keep taking it because there's still a chance. That's of right. That's right. Some going down. Well, I'm glad you're on the mend. So, uh, yes. So uh, probably getting a, uh, the weather's actually supposed to be pretty decent tomorrow. Yeah. So no, g- I, I guess getting a dive in <laughs> is still out. Darn. No, uh, I got stitches for the next 10 days. Darn. So once they come out though, we can talk. <laughs> I was so hoping to get a dive. You know, I might. I might see if that that guy that's a pilot out here since since we're off tomorrow because it's uh, Martin Luther King mm-hmm. uh, holiday. Uh, he might be available since they have the whole, you know, 25, 24 hours, you know, after a dive kind of thing. Uh, so normally Sundays would be out, but maybe he'll be available tomorrow. We'll see. I'll let, see if I can get a hold um, of him. Yeah. And then I have to work Monday. Which is kind of a, a bummer. Now, are the schools in and 
or they're out and you but you still have to work uh no teachers have to be there the students will not be there wow they get it off but what's we up with work. that tell me about it <laughs> it's a district what can <laughs> i say golly wow okay <laughs> so all right so uh We've been kind of, and I don't want this to take over the episode. Uh, no, please, we were, Yeah. <laughs> well, we were talking about the, uh, we were kind of talking about last week, the, the whole gun control thing. And I'd mentioned a chart that, uh, you know, showed relatively, you know, what kinds of things are, are significantly higher in death rate mm-hmm. for people compared to uh, gun violence and I so I got that chart and here here oh, it there is you go. I mean look at this down now obviously this isn't all the different things that 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 run into that, that create uh, untimely deaths for people but as far as statistics go and this is you know America with 300 over 300 million people and Three, thir- three million or thirty million, something like that. Weapons that yeah. they that they know about that are that people right. own, and we've got firearm homicides. Now these are actual classified as homicides. These aren't justifiable where you're defending yourself or your property or uh, uh, your police officer or whatever. This is actual homicides. <laughs> Eleven thousand in two thousand and is this, is this twelve? No, two thousand eleven. I think this is. <clears throat> so eleven thousand. Now, non-firearm homicides that includes that includes knives, bats, all other things. <laughs> bats. Six, yeah, sixteen thousand. So more people died, were killed, homicide by non-firearms that year than with firearms and then a little bit more than that uh unintended unintentional falls in other words (laughs) in other words natural selection taking taking its course (laughs) unintentionally fall to my death well speaking of unintentional falls did you see the that it was all day report on that woman (laughs) this week who was walking i forget i forget i think it was in it was one of the cities up north i think was uh, and I'm, I've never seen anything like this, but it's two. It was two cinder block walls. Mm-hmm. They were like twelve inches between each other. Right. I don't know how. You, what was this a castle or something? But yeah, was it was like a. Uh, and uh, I think it was around apartment complex or something. But some woman at three a.m. was walking on the top of them, and then slipped and fell in between them. So she was lodged. Part way down, stuck between these things. And she basically spent the rest of the night there screaming for help. Finally, somebody heard her, called the police, and then they brought the fire rescue and all that. And they literally had to cut. They had to figure out cameras and stuff, figure out exactly where she was, and then cut through the outer Blo- w- the blocks block. wow. to get right beside her to get to, to pull her out. <laughs> and, of course, they took like some sort of like oil or whatever, uh, vegetable oil or something, to lubricate her because you know she'd been there all night, yeah, and was pr- pretty well lodged. Oh wow! <clears throat> so they had to oil her up basically to sl- <laughs> slide her out. I'm like, <laughs> I'd not heard of that. Yeah, it was it was on the I mean, the uh, I know Fox News covered it all day, but I think like HLN and some of the others that had it like all day showing you know they were just going back and forth. I'm like, uh, you've got to be kidding me! So. You know, she might have been one of these statistics had they yeah. not rescued her. I mean, well, again, I've I don't I've heard of all the other ones, but I've never heard of accidental falls. But hey, I guess it's on there. You know, it so I'm saying that's natural selection is what that is. Yeah, uh, drug abuse twenty five thousand. So more than more than double the firearm homicides are deaths from drug abuse. Then you jump up to unintentional poisoning. So I guess the non-firearm homicides, that would be intentional poisoning. I guess that would be if you decided to eat blowfish. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hootie and the blowfish. Hey, let's try this tasty little blowfish. (laughs) I think it might be good. Did you think? Did you clean it properly? I think we could eat I, it. I think we could, have, but just, I didn't eat it. Wow, this tastes pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that would be bad. That would be bad. Yeah. So, uh, motor vehicle accidents: thirty-four thousand, over thirty-four thousand. Yeah. So three times as many uh, from firearms. And do we not 
do we not uh, i mean we have uh regulations in place but there are so many more uh vehicle accidents that claim people's lives and why don't we start banning those? I mean, come on. You know, why don't we go back to the horse buggy, you know, back to the... Uh, oh, but you know Amish. what? They had some pretty good statistics on that, too. You know, people getting stomp, trampled by horses. Stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, you know, you can't live without some risk. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, whether you far be it in a car, you know, and then not only that, they're making <laughs> cars a lot lighter now. They're making them out of material that not, aren't... I don't care how many airbags, unless they've got like the uh, the <laughs> demolition man yeah. thing. You are not going to survive. I mean, some they're of making these lighter them, vehicles. I mean, they're making them out of plastic now. Yeah. It's, you know, to get better gas mileage. Yep. It's it's insane. You know, there's the 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 liberal solution would probably be to make everybody use the ele- all electric vehicles, so they can't go as far and fast, mm-hmm. and not nearly as dangerous. So. Yeah. Um, this, this one kind of shocked me. Alcohol abuse, 107,000. We got a serious drinking problem in the United States. We do. You know, all the binge drinking going on in colleges and stuff. Unintentional injuries. I'm not exactly sure what qualifies as that, but that's 118,000 people died from unintentional injuries. I, I guess that would what, be... What, paper cuts? <laughs> well, I mean, unintentional injuries, maybe that would be, you know, like... You know, obesity and all of those like heart disease and, and stuff like that. I mean, you're not really. <laughs> well, maybe it's like sports related. Yeah, well, that could be it, too. Yeah, we've had seems to have seems that we like we've had a lot of that going on. Well, this no, year those too. people have killed themselves, though. Huh? Those people, the the ones that that actually I remember just recently are uh, a couple of sports people they they've shot they've no i'm talking about like where they've had like serious hits that create concussions oh okay and then they die yeah Yeah. uh medical errors look at this this is amazing a hundred and ninety five thousand people have died from medical errors i don't want to hear about that rob i just have my hip operated (laughs) on right but (laughs) but what that tells me is you know come on there that is it's there the the fact that so many people, 190, almost 200,000 people died mm. from medical errors. And, of course, n- no wonder, unfortunately, that we've got uh, uh, <coughs> uh, malpractice lawsuits mm-hmm. just out the kazoo, but it's just crazy. And then, by far, number one, tobacco use, 529,000 people. Oh, but you don't. Cigarettes don't kill you, didn't you? Didn't you read? That's true. They don't. <laughs> it's smoking them. You know, yeah. I I have to I have to admit, kind of like with guns, if you set a cigarette on the table and walk away, it's not going to kill a single person. That's right. But you got to put it in your mouth and suck on that thing while it's on fire. You know that always. You know, but they haven't banned smoking. Uh, they've actually just <laughs> limited the, I guess, the place where you can smoke. Yeah, but. but and then, yeah. of course, the taxes, they raise, you know, the price and everything. Else. Oh, yeah. The sin tax. Yes. Yeah. You yes. know, it's like, you know, why ban guns? Just make them more expensive to exactly. where people can't afford them. Exactly. So and that's kind of one of the things. Of course, now we saw this week, we saw the uh, the result of the big uh, powwow that Vice President Biden did. And and so there were a number, there were 23 different executive order type deals that uh, the president put out. And most of it is just garbage stuff. Um, most of it is basically addressing rules and laws that already exist. Although some of them mm-hmm. kind of push into uh, uh, what I would call the propaganda and indoctrinization route. But uh, thankfully... Some of the, the big things that he really wants to do mm-hmm. are things that require Congress, Congress to actually act, which I'm thankful for that, that we still have that requirement. You know, one of those, of course, was uh, an all out day. Diane Feinstein, Senator Feinstein, uh, like uh, assault weapons ban. Of course, they call them assault weapons, but they're not assault weapons. They are semi-automatic. And Fox News actually did a very good job of showing a picture of here is this rifle. It's a semi-automatic rifle. It doesn't it looks like any other Mm -hmm. Uh, old school rifle and then the right below it they said here's the exact same rifle all tricked out but it doesn't it's not any more lethal any more capable than the one that's not tricked out 
that <laughs> this one guy that was on a video I showed. Yeah. Uh, he he calls it furniture, and I think I think that's a, a great to describe it. it. Military style doesn't make it any more dangerous. It just looks, you know, just looks cool. It looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. But it's no more dangerous than a sta than any other semi-automatic uh, semi-automatic rifle. And then the other thing they're wanting to do is. Uh, ban l what they call uh, high ca high capacity magazines. High capacity. And again, the the video I've been shopping around a lot shows you if you are only if you have a thirty round clip or three ten round clips, you only lose half a second in your ability to get off the number of rounds. So mm -hmm. what are they going to do? So you can only have a ten round uh, mag or clip, and you can only buy one. That's that's what they're going to have to do in order to make a real substantive change, if that's what they're going for. So it solves nothing. This no. is all about fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yeah. So um, because I'm a firearms instructor, I kind of been shopping around. Uh, well, law enforcement firearms instructor. Yeah. I've been shopping around. Um, you know, the law enforcement places where where I can purchase yeah. guns and stuff, and on of course on their websites and and stuff like that, they have posted that because of the change or the possibility of change i guess they sold out everybody was afraid that they I were believe it. so I they went out it. there but i mean it's not a problem for me but it would be a problem for you know you like yeah. for example to yeah. obtain that gun yeah for me it's just it's not hard i mean it's the same thing as it was back in when they had the ban i was still able to to get one of those 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 type of weapons yeah uh, all I had to do was pull out a form and then just produce my right. identification. But right. for the civilian person, yeah, you, you're you going to have a difficult time yep. obtaining that if you haven't already. So if you don't have one, uh, don't fear. Because apparently this is going to have to go through Congress. Yes. And from what I've been reading, a lot of these congressmen are not going to go against the Second Amendment. Nope. So um, it, it's going to be a tough battle for the president to get that. He might, he might get the, the clips. But as far as the weapons, um, I shouldn't, you know, it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. And besides, there's so many, so much of these, uh, these weapons out there and so much, you know, there's so, so much quantity that if you don't have one and you're thinking about getting one, you better jump on it now because the price of these, uh, accessories are going to oh, yeah. skyrocket. Yeah. If you, if you can't already find them. I did just for the heck of it. I went on to, uh, cheaper than dirt dot com yeah. to look and of course, they're sold out of just about everything. Yeah, they're sold out. But of I can get I can get some spare clips for our uh, our Raven P twenty five for mm -hmm. twelve bucks. So, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> get them now. So, no kidding. <laughs> and then just not, then the other hard part is going to be getting plenty of ammunition. So yeah, the ammunition. <coughs> I yeah. would I would I would bet to say that the tax or the price of ammunition is going to skyrocket if they don't if they're not able to get these bans in place. They'll just tax the heck they're out gonna, of it. Yeah, you're gonna you saw they're trying to put a, a 1% tax on violent games. I, yeah. You, I'm like, you what does you that, that accomplish? I saw you mention that. I'm like, what? I'm like, that makes no sense at all. It accomplishes zilch. Zero. All it is is money. They're yeah. just trying to get more money. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on. All right. Speaking of violent but games. Gotta, but going back real quick, you oh. did like my picture, didn't you? That was an awesome picture. <laughs> that was a great cartoon. That's exactly right. <laughs> the before and after gun uh, banning the assault weapons. Yeah, is the, great. the criminal had a frown on his face, and then he had a big smile. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, oh, message. Um, okay, so uh, speaking of violence, uh, Tara and I went to go see Last Stand last night uh the arnold schwarzenegger how was flick. it um it wasn't it wasn't what i was expecting from an arnold film i mean arnold you know he's been of course the terminator the, the terminator <laughs> uh and you know those movies are are violent and there's yeah. a huge body count etc but you know uh at least his uh, oh here we go again so and his his movies are um are typically you know action and violent but this one was like a uh, oh who's the 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 guy that in this area has done uh he's done a lot of these really wild very very like machete and oh is uh yeah rodriguez is it? Yeah, yeah uh gallardo well if you're if you're referring to the director it's uh, yeah. robert rodriguez yeah 
That's yeah. what I'm thinking of. It was like one of those. I mean, it was pretty graphic. I mean, oh, it was wow. like, this is for an Arnold film. I was <laughs> like, wow. Um, but it was, you know, it was a good story. I won't do any spoilers, but you know, it was a good story. You know, he retired uh, or semi-retired uh, drug enforcement officer. And, you know, he had, he had a rough past and he's just trying to basically uh, live his life in a, in a, in a, uh, what? an Arizona or New Mexico town and uh, trouble comes to him kind of thing. Oh, it's wow. like, oh, you know, it's my day off and here it comes <laughs> all this stuff going. So, and of course you, you got the, the, it's a small town. So you got like the local Barney fives and all that stuff and they have to kind of step up. So it's kind of a, it was, it was, it was a very, <laughs> very action packed, uh, kept our attention the whole time. Wow. Well, that's good. Um, but mm. it was definitely violent definitely violent so i'm thinking as i'm watching this i'm thinking well hollywood you're just really you know <laughs> uh, you can't you can't win on the gun control thing huh? I, I um you know the, there was uh I, I remember stumbling in a conversation about gun control and in about the way the movies are being made you right know, today right, right um you know it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to to address issues with gun control and everything when you have these violent movies coming out and everybody going out there to see them, um, you know, when are you going to regulate that? Exactly. You know, and we do have we do have our uh, our rating system. Right, but, but you know, you know kids like, still get in. I know I mean, there were on. there were kids that should not have been in that movie that were in that movie last night. I'm like, parents, are you? We're in the middle of this all of this hullabaloo about gun violence, and you're bringing impressionable impressionable kids. To a movie like this, I mean, I, it's not a movie I would even. I almost, I almost wish. I, I'm not quite there yet, but I almost wish that they had more strict uh, rating system involved, because where certain types of movies you simply can't bring anybody under. A certain, I don't care if you're the parent Parents or legal not, guardian right. that you can't bring them to these movies, simply because. It, Even as a, right. as a as as an eighteen year old, you're still very impressionable with this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if it was you or somebody, you know, because I know it this looks is, like me. Or <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, we've been talking about gun control, and I've and I've been beat down to death, you know, all week. <laughs> I'm sure, you know. Uh, but it, it's it's more of a. I don't know if it was you that said it or somebody told me that you know the. The first thing about gun control starts at the house, you know. Yeah, yeah. You, know, it, you have to educate your kids, and then obviously, you of all people know who you have as children. Right. And if you feel or see that, you know, something's not right in the cabeza, yeah. or you, you know, <laughs> something's just not clicking. Right. You know, I know when my kids are acting kind of strange, or I know when something's wrong because I, you know, we can tell. Yes, you know, and exactly. if something's like that, you know, I definitely have everything secure and in a place right. to where you're not going to be able to get a hold of my right. my weapons. Um, but if you're going to be a responsible, and we've said this before, yes, if you're going to obtain a weapon, please be responsible and secure that thing. Um, I know that a lot of you are probably thinking the same, you know, gun locks and gun safes. Well, what if somebody breaks into my house in the middle of the night? Yeah. Well, keep one handy, but put the rest away. Um, and then be have a process. Exactly. Have a process. There's a process for everything. You know, yes. you plan for emergencies, you plan for fire drills, you plan for everything, plan that that thing can get out of your hands and damage can be done. Yeah. And that's it. You know, be responsible. Yep. That, that's why I think that, uh, I really think that the, the firearms training uh, would be a benefit if the government wants, really wants to do something, invest in that kind of awareness and training. Yeah. Make that available to folks. That mm -hmm. that actually pays off, I think, better. We're not going to take your weapons. We're not going to tell you what you can and can't buy. But we are going to help you understand the best way to use it and keep it out of the wrong hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just what makes sense. And it's it's that is the part that, for me, when we talk about common sense approach to, to owning weapons or gun control... That's the common sense about it. Yep. Learn to be a responsible user. You know, the uh, I and I posted this. We have freedoms in this country, and President uh, Vice President Biden, some of the other 
talking faces up there, <laughs> you know, would say, well, people have got to under realize that, you know, with these rights come responsibilities. Yes, absolutely. But with these freedoms come risks. Yeah. You do not have freedom without risk. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. That's actually scriptural. I mean, God gave us free will. He didn't want a bunch of robots. He, so we have free will knowing the risk was we could say, eh, no, <laughs> knowing that that was the risk. Of course, there are consequences to those risks, but what we try to do as a society is we try to be smart and mitigate, you know, do some, uh, do some little, a little bit of thinking to mitigate those risks and education and training is really the best way to do that. That is correct. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you know, we talk about diving. Oops, sorry. That's okay. We talk about diving. Um, it, it's the same thing as if you're going to be a diver. It's and it has dangers to it. There are risks. There are risks. I mean, if you choose to dive below or beyond your 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 experience level, you're going to get hurt, and that's just yeah. the way it is. The same thing if you have a weapon out there and you're you're careless with it, somebody or you are going to get hurt. Yeah, and that's just the way it rolls. Um. I don't know how, how else to put it. You know, and just, it just occurs to me, think about scuba diving in this context. There are no actual policing regulating ag agencies for scuba diving as a sport. None. No, no. Scuba diving is a completely self-regulated activity. Even though there are known dangers, you can, if you don't follow the, the training and, and procedures, you can die. Mm -hmm. But there are no, we don't have federal diving laws. We don't have state diving laws. The only thing that we have is what the industry itself has set up for certification. And they have worked well enough together that getting certified with PADI or SSI or, or, or S, uh, SDI, any of those pretty much covers the same kind of thing. Some of them place a little bit more emphasis on one aspect or another, but generally you come out of your training with the skills necessary to be a safe diver, but you still have the risk of doing something stupid or just a random uh, set of conditions that could in uh, result in injury or death mm -hmm. and that's the risk you take but you do you you get the education and training to mitigate those risks so that you have the freedom to enjoy scuba diving as a sport it should be no different with with guns um you know we've dove you know you've dove with a lot of people i've dove with a, a few people that i felt were a little dangerous <laughs> and um uh, it, it and it's the same thing it's kind of like now I have to rely on my own skills yep. to get me through the dive. Yes. Um, so, but at the same time, that makes you responsible. You're a responsible person. Exactly. You know, um, if people choose to dive, you know, whack and they're out there just doing crazy things, obviously you probably won't dive with them ever again. Right. Now, it's the same thing with, with guns. If if I go into a house and I see people that are very careless with their weapons right. and they're just, right. you know, throw them they're all over the place, you know, I probably won't. I'd be afraid. <laughs> right. You know, I'd be afraid right. of them. You know, those are the, the people that I would be kind of a concern with. But and uh, that's just the way it goes. I exactly. Mean, responsibility. So, OK, so moving, moving right along. Uh, I had. Uh, uh, I've been updating, uh, I get, of course, as an instructor, I get updates on different things that are coming out. And I got the latest revision of the instructor cards for uh, the Dive Master course. Ooh. And they're, they're a lot shorter. Well, they've gone, to, I think they've gone to uh, eye charts as their, <laughs> as their print. But uh, so I have to get my old man glasses out to, to read them. But it's a lot shorter. Uh, yeah. Card I, set. It was like twice this. Yeah length for uh, so that's a benefit for me <laughs> yeah well yeah so it basically means that you get to start over with the, some of that stuff so there you go um, and i finally after uh, a lot of effort i finally got my uh finally got my let me switch cameras oh the here. dive sausage yeah you know, i got my uh <laughs> my emergency one i've been uh i've been trying to get i probably am making a mistake by opening this up the, here, shake, the, the shaking sausage yeah, it's hard to get Oh, well, 
I don't want to open it up because but basically it's a it's a bright yellow. It's got emergency on it because I was talking about being a self-reliant diver. And one of the things that you want to take advantage of is making sure you have a lot of redundancy. And, you know, you you obviously want to file if you're going to dive uh, solo, you want to make sure that you um, uh, file a dive plan with somebody who is going to be who should be aware. Like in my case, if I were going to dive solo, I'd have my pony tank and all this other stuff. But I'd be letting my wife know, hey, I'm going solo diving out at Scuba Cove. I will call or text you just before I go in the water. And knowing that my plan is to be down no longer no longer than, let's say, 50 minutes or yeah. whatever. And so, you know, I'd be diving with, uh, well, I, I would probably be diving with a the signal sausage or other dive flag. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also having the redundancy of a, and those are typically orange, but you can get these bright yellow ones marked emergency or you can mark them emergency so that if you get stuck or in trouble, you can let that thing up so that somebody can see that not only here's where you are by the first uh, signal, but they see that you're signaling emergency, that there's a problem. Right. And so hopefully if you've got your redundancy, your, your pony bottle, et cetera, you're buying yourself some time. Mm-hmm. And by filing a, a proper plan, then, uh, then if your, your spouse or somebody that you filed your dive plan with do, doesn't hear from you by such and such time, they can start making the emergency calls. You get your, right. all your numbers together. In our case, it'd be contacting the park service because they have a dive team. Right. And she could say he's diving out at this area and he's got... Uh, signal equipment, etc. So uh, I finally got that in. It was kind of a, <laughs> it was kind of a weird thing. I ordered, or you ordered one from one place, and it was it, the pictures and everything showed it was this. And what arrived was this really large, bright orange one that was also doubled as a as a lift bag. <laughs> I mean, this thing was monstrous. I'm like, so if we want to lift something there up, I've got go. a, I've got a lift. We've bag got a now. lift bag. So that go. was pretty interesting. Well, we need water to lift out of a, you yeah. know, <laughs> I haven't been out there. I was, man, I was just hoping to get a dive in and I might still, we'll see what happens. Cool. So, uh, cause then the, the weather's going to drop in temps again, but I need yeah. to get out there just so I can get the, see what the visibility is like and temps and, and all that good stuff. Cool. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, if you're okay with, uh, back to the original thing, if you're, if you're, if you if you like Arnold movies, this is a kind of good one. It's got a great <laughs> ending to it. Cool. Uh, a very good ending to it. Um, and it's got quite a bit of humor to it, too, as, you know, Arnold's movies typically <laughs> do. We, next weekend and the weekend after, we got some of the movies we've been looking yeah. forward to coming up. So that's going to be... Uh, I'm actually kind of interested in seeing that Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. <laughs> <Hansel> <laughs> I'm kind of actually looking hunters. forward to seeing that one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that one looks pretty cool. <laughs> so I don't think what's his face is ever going to get away from shooting bows and arrows. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he's typecast as Hawkeye, I think. Yeah, so. you know he's that's it. <clears throat> so, so the uh, the title of the episode this week is "Dive Different," and uh, what kind of spurred me on this was I was reading a number of different scuba sites and uh, scuba websites and. A lot of people were talking about how they get kind of stuck in a rut, mm-hmm. uh, which you can if you don't go a lot of places. Um, and so it was like, okay, you know what? We, we kind of need to make a point. Maybe they set up a, uh, I don't know, a resolution or whatever to, and and we want to encourage you folks out there to to think about this year, to do s- dive different, do something different that you haven't done before. And I just kind of put together a real short list of, of some ideas uh, an obvious one, especially is it from an instructor's point of view, is get additional certifications. Yeah, you know whether that's a specialty, you know, which uh, which is what I call the horizontal um, certification route, where you're just you're staying at the same level, but you're just adding different specialties, um, or go the vertical route. Uh, I really encourage folks to if you, uh, if all you have is your basic, at least make it a point this year of getting your advanced. Yeah, you know. You know, as, as well as anybody who's, who's uh, had the advance before, there are definite benefits to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the least of which, of course, is uh, the fact that it opens up some more diving to you 
uh, without uh, incurring the additional cost of bringing dive masters or, or instructors along with you on dives. <laughs> right. Um, you know, in some of the, some of the, when you get your advanced, some of the courses that you're going to do are part of some of the specialties that you, you have to have in order to obtain the, that certification. Right. So, um, Rob does a really good job of putting, putting it together, you know, with, with, of course, our surroundings, what we have available yeah. to us. Um, but it actually really, if you're a good basic open water diver, if you go and try for your advance, it, it actually makes it just that much more better for you. If you right. ever go somewhere, um, your skills are, you're moving up to the next level of skill sets. Uh, you start, you know, Rob will start kind of pointing out things to you. Well, you know, this this is why you do this and this is why we do that. And it, it's just a little bit more, but it is a lot of fun. It, it is a, lo a lot more task loading, though, yes. than your basic open water. If, you know, if you felt, <laughs> you know, that you were That's challenged right. during your basic, uh, your challenges are just beginning. But it's for a good thing. I'm not trying to scare anybody out there. Um, it, it, it just makes you a great... Um, well, a better diver. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's worthwhile. And it, it, it's something different for the new year. Yes. <clears throat> you know, anytime you expand your, your knowledge, your understanding of a sport like uh, scuba diving, mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing what, what more things you do have that you can talk with people. You know, I have some great conversations with folks who've had tremendous experience of diving all over the world in different kinds of situations when when tara and i go on these dive trips i just love talking with people you know i don't feel every once in a while you run into run into the i'm joe diver and i've got <laughs> you know i've got 1500 uh log dives and i've been diving with two takes and uh you know <laughs> i was diving before uh, mike nelson you know you, know, you get those types but that's so rare that i run into those so uh, the, the kind of folks we run into, they may be uh, specializing in photography. And so right. I, get to, I get to draw information from them and share, well, what were some great places, that, what were some of the best places to, to get photographs or what kind of gear do you recommend for somebody beginning? I mean, you can have great conversations just sharing your experience. And, mm -hmm. so, and somebody may say, Hey, you're, so you're from Texas. Well, so what, what kind of diving is there there? And you get to share what it's like and, yeah. and you know, you just, you get those conversations, but you don't get that without getting certifications to be able to do different things that, that, uh, you haven't been doing before. Right. <clears throat> so another way you can dive differently is dive a location you've never been before. So if you, if you're predominantly a, a, uh, freshwater diver, then why not find a way to go diving in, um, in saltwater? Uh, you know, we're going to try and do that this year. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Tara and I have done a lot of saltwater diving, but uh, a lot of the folks that we know, you included, have not had an opportunity yet to go diving in, in saltwater. Mm -hmm. So we have, within a, you know, four or five hour drive, uh, an opportunity, we can go diving in the Gulf Coast here. We just got to decide for sure we're going to go do it and set it up. And it's mm -hmm. not that expensive. It's not like going to the Keys or Kosovo or whatever. <clears throat> so endeavoring to dive in salt water, which really opens up, it, it just really changes. Um, it just changes your, your perception and view of diving. If you've only been diving in freshwater on the flip side, I know a lot of people who they just, Oh, I don't do freshwater diving. I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, all they do is dive salt water. Now, most folks don't have the funds, especially in this economy, to go diving in exotic climbs all the time. And so they maybe, maybe go once a year. Okay, so you get a week's worth of diving if you do that. Because I don't know, I don't know a lot of people who are hardcore divers like me. I, uh, Tara and I will go diving every day, several times, you know, and even try and get night dives in. Uh, most people will go on these trips and they'll do a couple of different days, maybe a Tuesday and Thursday diving and the rest is just, you know, sightseeing and all that stuff. Yeah. So they don't really get a lot of diving in. And I'm like, there are so many great places to, to, and not so great places to dive freshwater. And it, and it also exposes you to, um, 
a little bit more experience of adjusting your gear and your diving style to compensate for the differences in freshwater because mm -hmm. salt water is more mm -hmm. buoyant. You need more lead in salt water in order to, to be neutrally buoyant mm -hmm. in salt water. So get learning what your setup were, how, what your setup is going to be like when you dive in freshwater is going to be an advantage because any knowledge that you add and any experience that you add is helpful. You know, and you get your dive log, which I actually have <clears throat> mine right here. You know, you get your dive log, and you, especially if, if you don't dive frequently, you know, you can get your dive log and, you know, keep all your records of, of your experiences there. I mean, it's real. Of course, the light's bright. Let me get my camera shown up here. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. It's probably still too bright. Yeah. Darn. Bright lights. Bright light. Well, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've got everything in here. So when we go to these places, uh, Tara and I, especially especially Tara, uh, we're writing information. You know, if we've if we were diving in a condition that we've never gone diving before, then we write that stuff down because we may not hit that as frequently. Right. So you keep a log of this information. So you're like, okay, hey, uh, I normally don't go diving um, in in cold water. And so I need a thicker wetsuit. How much weight did I need? So, you know, whereas during the summer, we've got our, we've got our weights dialed in. I mean, we know what we're going to be diving with. But in the cold water, it's like, oh, we kind of have to go back to our dive logs to mm -hmm. write that down. But we wouldn't have that if we didn't, write, if we didn't actually go out and try it. And, and I've, actually, <coughs> I've actually gone back to my logs back to see because, you know, we don't dive that much in the winter. Yeah. But every time when, when I do dive, I tend to forget, well, how much weight that I have. Yeah. So I'll go back, um, to, you know, to the date sometime in January yep. or something, and I'll see how much weight I actually used. Um, but then a lot of things come into play also because, you know, during the holiday season, you tend to eat a little bit more, so you gain a little bit of weight. Yeah. Uh, what? You know, you might have <laughs> lost weight. So you yeah. constantly have to be marking and making sure you have all that information because Rob tends to sometimes add weight, and then sometimes he has to take off weight because, yeah. you know, he's overweighted. So, you know, and he's he's writing everything down. I'm overweighted. I'm not overweight. <laughs> I said overweight and not overweight. I know. I just want to make sure that this, <laughs> yeah. people know that so, distinction. Uh, you know, there there's different reasons why, but it's very important that you log all that information down. Do I look fat in this wetsuit? <laughs> <laughs> this is wetsuit made me look fat. Can you, can you see my belly? That's <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's just different reasons why, but, you right. know, they're all good reasons. Yes. Uh, conditions, um, uh, weather, temperature. Yeah. Um, just everything. Yeah. So, and some other ways you, you can uh, dive different. If it, all you've ever done is diving during the day, mm -hmm. try night dive. I love night I, dive. That's our favorite. That's it really is our favorite, even out here at the lake. But because it does, it's a whole different environment. And if you, if the thrill is a little bit dimmed for you as a diver, dur because all you dive is during the day, I guarantee you. The thrill, the, 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 if you're a thrill seeker, that will come back on a night dive. If you've never gone diving on a night dive before, that will, <laughs> that will put you on the edge again. Yeah. It is fun and exciting. And, you know, and that can get tired too, but it hasn't yet for us. No. Uh, but, you know, that's another we, way to we, put we've it. We've done, I don't know, we've done quite, quite a, a few, few. <laughs> quite a few night dives. Um, and we joke about, uh, this kind of little thing that we do during the night dive, yeah. which is kind of funny, but <laughs> we're not going to discuss it here because you have to join us on a night That's dive right. to see it. That's right. Um, but it's uh, worth the price of admission. Yes, it is. <laughs> but um, I still get a kick out of um, sometimes we'll we'll start from the the shore and swim out to our location. Right. Or sometimes we'll just drop down on something in the middle of the lake. And we're just, you know, you just keep going and keep going and keep right, going and right. keep going. And it's kind of like it never are, stops. Are we ever going to hit the bottom? And then right. all of a sudden you just see the ground coming up slowly. Yeah, that and is it, just so cool. It's just awesome. Yeah. So another way you can dive different is mm -hmm. go get it, uh, go on a uh, get into cave diving. Yeah. Uh, again, this would be like another training or specialty. But uh, there are some places that you can go that they will basically take you through a um, 
cave familiarization kind of a dive. Uh, I know a very popular thing down in Mexico is cenotes, which are basically caves where part of the top is actually caved in. And so it's actually open. So basically it's kind of like diving through. Like a swim through. Almost. Yeah, it's like, but a huge swim through. So yeah. uh, you will swim through like cave-like areas. Then you'll see opening above you mm-hmm. and then it'll be enclosed and it'll be opening above you. And, uh, and so those are a new experience. Yeah. And then of course, wreck diving, whether you're, whether you do penetration or not, uh, you could still just diving on a wreck is just amazing is there is, it is one of my favorites right there. Uh, Tara and I always make a, an effort to hit a number of wrecks when we go places and we, we fashioned one trip specifically to the keys to dive on the, um, the Vandenberg, which was just sunk a month before we got there. I mean, we timed our trip specifically for that. So those are just, those are some ideas for what you can do to dive different as far as uh, doing it in a different place that you haven't been. A unique place like, that we want to try to do is the, uh, the, um, the abandoned uh, missile silo yes. in Valhalla. Now, yeah. that'll be a little bit of a drive. That'll be a weekend trip, kind of like go, going to Balmeray. Right. But, man, and it'll be a cold dive. It's going to be a cold <laughs> dive. But, again, you know, he mentioned, you know, certification. You have to have, uh, I think, above advanced. Well, I think you have to have advanced. At least to advanced that. to dive that place. Um, but, I mean, you're diving a, a missile silo where there once used to be a, a nuclear missile there. Yep. I thought, yep. I think that's ICBMs. pretty cool. ICBMs. Yep. Uh and we, we discussed that in an earlier episode, yeah. but, um, yeah, I mean, I want to definitely do that. Oh yeah. We got to put that on the list. Okay. Some other ideas volunteer to, uh, to work with some of the large aquariums or with research projects, mm-hmm. believe it or not, believe it or not, a lot of these, uh, these large aquariums, uh, utilize volunteer divers to help with the cleaning and the, the feeding of the fish, etc. So, if you if you live near a uh, a city that has one of those, or are planning a vacation, you might take advantage of opportunity of contacting those those large aquariums and saying, "Hey, I'm a I'm an advanced diver, or a basic diver, and I've heard you have a volunteer program, and mm-hmm. see what you can do about getting lined up with them." I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah, I was I was looking uh, I was looking through some websites and I saw a picture. I had to dig deeper, and I wish I'd written down the the name of the. There's a hotel over in Europe, where, in the middle, it's 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 a huge multi-story hotel, and in the center, it's it's circular inside. It's a it's a round hotel. The the balconies and the rooms look to the interior, kind of like uh, kind uh, kind of reminiscent of the remake of Dread. Mm-hmm where everybody stands on the balconies and they can look at the other balconies and mm-hmm. they can look down the center area in the center area was the lobby and the, the, uh, the restaurant, etc. Mm-hmm. But right in the dead center was this huge circular cylindrical aquarium, multiple stories. Somebody's got to clean that thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? And they showed pictures of somebody diving in there, feeding and cleaning. And I was like, that would be a pretty awesome gig for a while. At least yeah. that would be mm-hmm. cool. Um, <coughs> I need to find those pictures and maybe put that up next week. Somewhere. You know, we, we discussed this one time. I, I don't know if it was with, um, I don't know if it was Richard that was going to set it up or somebody remember when we were going to try to dive at SeaWorld. Oh yeah. 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 I, I know that at times one of my students, I, I don't think she's still working there. Uh, Stephanie Ramadi. I'll need to, I need to, uh, I'm friends with her on Facebook. I need to find out if she's still involved with that. Because she yeah. could give us more info on that. Yeah, I know sometimes, uh, well, a uh, colleague of ours, or should I say a, a dive buddy, friend, <coughs> that, that uh, hasn't dove in a while but used to dive with us, um, he he mentioned that at times they would allow divers to dive in the actual whale tanks wow. um, and stuff like that. And we were kind of like, well, <coughs> let's see. Yeah, it would be cool. Let's make it happen. Uh, never heard anything anymore about it. Of course, But, yeah. you know, yeah. um, that, that would be neat. I would love to dive that. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there, there are a lot of uh, colleges and universities have uh, various research mm-hmm. projects that they'll do. Mm-hmm. And so you might find an opportunity contacting them to assist them 
uh, and learn something in the process, whatever their research project is. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's involving, uh, you know, some sort of uh, ocean biology or something like that. But yeah. uh, still, you get experience and uh, it just opens up a whole new world for you. And then uh, one other thing that and we've been involved with this before is volunteer for a stream or lake cleanup. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's so many areas that are totally abused by by land walkers. <laughs> <laughs> land that, walkers. Yeah, that you, you, well put. Yeah. But you could uh, actually provide a great benefit of being able to uh, extend the cleanup of a uh, recreational area beyond the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done that a number of times out here and we were hoping to do something like that again this year. I'm not sure what's going to take to make it happen, but we, we definitely want to do that. Um, the, uh, <coughs> here in our local area, the Creek, the Creek walk, we, you know, it's yeah. a Creek walk. Yeah. Um, it, it tends to get abused a lot by like Rob said, land walkers, um, everything and anything you can land possibly lovers. imagine ends up in the water. And whether it be a, right. a windy day and not necessarily, you know, purposely end up there. Right. But trash tends to fly off of tables and, and things like yeah. that. And people just don't go after it ends up in in the water. Yeah. So um, people like us would love to show up and just kind of, you know, it sounds like a gruesome job, but it it's actually fun because we're it helping the community. Fun. Especially if you have a if you yeah. have a large group of, of people getting together. It is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, you take your breaks. You during do some surface interval, although out at the creek here, it's yeah. not much, not much depth. So, <laughs> you know, you don't feet. have a big issue with uh, surface interval there. But, uh, you know, you do the cookout or whatever. And there's so many ways you can make it fun. Um, but <coughs> we're we're gonna see if we can do that this year. Yeah, yeah. and uh, make a make a day of it. You yeah, know, absolutely. have a cookout and absolutely. Um, before we segue into the next uh, topic, I wanted to, mm. I kept mentioning this, I wanted to put up a video, a couple of videos, I guess, of uh, an unusual occurrence out at, uh, at Lake Amistad. I was with a student on her final dive uh, where uh, we got surrounded, see if I can run up here, we got surrounded by a large group of of carp I mean and I've got a lot of footage there there she is there <laughs> I mean they just were coming I mean, just they were everywhere and this is the kind of th thing out of, out of the lake that you kind of you you live for an experience like this where they're just coming from everywhere I was like you got a treat with this one I mean they just came so close. This ability wasn't too hateful either. I mean, look at these. I mean, these literally were just almost within reach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, you, we normally would see one or two carp. Yeah. Man, these monsters were just mm. everywhere. See, I've got. I wanted to bring another one up here. Let me get rid of this one. Uh, and da -da. supposedly, there's a version of this software that's going to come out where I can pre, I can load this stuff up on the fly without doing the live, <laughs> uh, doing the live uh, switch. Here we go. Let me expand this out. That's better. <coughs> Visibility was about 15 feet yeah. that day. You know what I tell you? How can you not like or love doing something like that? I, I know. I, I mean, mean where else are you going to do something like that? 
You know, everybody that I talk to is like, oh, you scuba dive? Yeah. Oh, I've seen it on TV. I always want to try it. Well, let's go. I uh, know. Kidding. <laughs> no kidding. This year, we are going to do a couple of Discover Scubas. We absolutely are. And then I get the occasional, oh, no. Uh, I'll I never can't do swim. that. Uh, I can't well, swim. Well, yeah. If you I, can't swim, it's. Yeah, it's kind of a bust, out. but. Yeah. Still, that's a lot of fun. I mean, how can you. And then at night. Imagine pitch oh, black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then you shine your light and one of these is in front of you. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's there. So, knock on your front door yeah, saying hello. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the, there is just nothing not fun about that. No. It's just lots of fun. So, okay. So, uh, next topic, uh, scuba diving movies. I just kind of put together a list. Some I've seen. Most of these I've seen. Some I haven't, but I've kind of been interested in maybe you know, hitting Netflix up. Or I didn't know if there was any that you're aware of that you maybe saw that either is not that's not on the, this list. But these are some of the more popular scuba diving uh, movies or movies that involve diving. Uh, <laughs> the Cave. You seen that one? Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was pretty good. It was pretty yeah, good. It's all right. <clears throat> uh, extremely far fetched, but uh, you know, it's more of a diving spelunking horror film but <laughs> yeah aliens in the underwater you know but still it involved a lot of yeah, scuba diving, diving and it was yeah. pretty cool uh it you talk about something that would be diving different <laughs> that that would be it there right there go. uh the deep which is of course probably one of the most well-known ones yeah um so one of my favorites yep Yep. So <coughs> what year did that come out? 70 76. 76? So yeah. around there. Yeah. Around 1976. And of course, The Abyss. The Abyss. Great movie. Uh, not so much in the scuba diving arena. Uh, some like uh, <coughs> more of the hard hat diving. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Men of Honor, which is kind of old yeah. school. Uh, that's mostly like about the hard, the hard helmet diving. <clears throat> but still, so, and I haven't actually seen that. I've only seen scenes from it. So one of these days, I'll have to hit Netflix and and. You haven't get seen which one? one? Uh, Men of Honor. You've never seen it? No, I haven't. Oh man. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm sure if you have seen it, uh, it it's a really good movie. Um, it it was it kind of takes place where <coughs> the the Navy was using the old uh, band mask. Yeah. The old heavy Davy Crockett. The helmet, yes. The helmet. Davy Crockett. And, um, well, who is it? Davy Jones? Or no, Davey? was it Davy Jones? No. Who okay. you? Anyway. It was a helmet. <laughs> it was a helmet. Um, but it, it goes to show how the Navy at that time was progressing into different styles of dive suits and stuff, which is which is a really good movie. Yeah. Um, but the actual suit itself was... Um, the diver himself couldn't even stand up. It was so heavy, heavy that they had needed to get assistance. Yeah. Uh, without giving the movie away, there was a, there was a reason why he couldn't stand up. So yeah, he had a dive accident and you know, it kind of goes into right. it, but he was very determined and was able to you know, succeed. Uh. But yeah, really good movie. And of course, uh, one of my absolute favorites is Sanctum. Yeah, that was awesome. And if you if you haven't seen it in 3D, you absolutely <laughs> have to. Yeah. The the one of the best scenes in the movie is they they go into this this room. It's a, it's cave diving. They go into this room that nobody has ever been in before, and it's such a humongous room. And the way the camera hits them yeah. in it in 3D. I felt like I needed my scuba gear because you just feel like you're right there. Yeah. You are just in the middle of this. It was breathtaking. Um, I'd also, love to see it, see it in IMAX. That would be great. Oh, gosh, <laughs> right. Um, it was an awesome movie, but if, you, if you're if you kind of um, – and it's based on a true story, mind you. Yeah. But, th again, this is cave diving, and they were, you know, exploring caves and trying to find uh, – you know, they were kind of like, I guess, scientists and yeah. stuff. They had a lot of, you know, gear, and, of course, they were, they were skilled and experienced at that. But, you know, again, they uh, they did have uh, some accidents and, you know, but they were diving safe. It was just the conditions in which they were diving made it difficult. But yeah. very good movie. Yeah. Awesome. And then in 3D, oh, it, was, it was awesome. Breathtaking. Yeah. Okay. And, of course, one that I'm sure anybody who dives at all or doesn't dive has probably seen a million times Into the Blue with Jessica Alba. Yeah, that was a really good movie. It was a good movie. Uh, good storyline. It was actually, uh, I, I thought it was going to be 
I don't know. I'm not sure what I expected. Um, but it was hmm. like, is it, you know, a young couple trying to make it in the world and, you know, the happy go lucky. And then they get, they get unfortunately tagged involved with the wrong people or, or the, the wrong people involve themselves with mm -hmm. them. <clears throat> and so it's, you know, involves treasure hunting and all this stuff, but some great diving scenes in that movie. Right. Great um, diving. Scenes. The, uh, and I, and the reason I liked it was because it wasn't far fetched diving. It was, you no. know, it was actually, yeah. you know, pretty, pretty realistic good, but realistic yeah and actually that movie is a spin-off or kind of a remake of the deep it yeah it, it really kind of they kind of changed a little bit but it was a, it was a remake of deep and then the deep was made in 1970 right. something right um and if you look at the gear that they use in the deep and the gear that they're using in the new wound you know they're using modern gear yeah it's amazing how people used to dive Yes. Then. Well, you know, I watch these old sea hunt yeah. uh, episodes and, you know, no BC, no gauge. It was just the, the J valve that would flip when it was time. And I'm like seeing some of this stuff that back then, I'm like, wow, um, we've come a long <laughs> way. Well, in the diving. But um, really good movies. Yeah. Uh, Sphere. Sphere. Again, kind of like the abyss. There's a lot of. Uh, Underwater walking, but in yeah. uh, a nice little science fiction twist mm -hmm. on there too. It was kind of a pretty exciting mm -hmm. movie. Uh, Deep Blue Sea, I haven't seen, uh, but evidently a lot of folks in dive community uh, really like that movie. The, uh, yeah, Deep Blue Sea. Uh, have you seen it? Oh yeah, <coughs> I've seen it about a hundred times. Oh really? Yeah, it, it's a good movie. Very little, very little diving. Oh involved. really? Yeah, but there is a couple of scenes. Uh, where he is diving, because that's Sam Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, that Samuel one. and uh, the Punisher. Oh, no, who's the rapper? Um, oh yeah, it was uh, LL Cool J. Yeah, LL Cool J. He's a cook in there. Is he a cook? Yeah, he's a cook. Uh, he's a he's either either a cook or a security guard in the <laughs> movies that he's in. Uh, really good movie though. Yeah. Um, Fool's yeah. Gold. Haven't seen that one, but that one looks pretty good too. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> uh, Matthew uh, Matthew McConaughey. God, how you pronounce his name? Uh, of course, you know that's eye candy for for girls, but uh, <laughs> but that one seemed like it had a lot of similarities also to Into the Blue. Mm -hmm. You know, husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend. I couldn't tell which. Uh, Kate Hudson was on it. Yeah, um, they're getting a divorce. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it. And uh, there, he does. Uh, uh, there's a. It looked like from the from the clips, it looked like there's some good dives. There, there there's too. a lot. The, he does some night diving in there. Hey, cool. Yeah. There we so, go. Yeah. There's Sign some night. Up. Yeah. There's some night diving that's that actually takes place in that Sweet. movie. Sweet. Uh, he's diving off of a boat into a, kind of like a cave like uh -huh. area. So, but he does it at night, and of course, it's in the Caribbean. Right. So it's treasures it's, involved. Yeah. Shallow, yeah. shallow area. Um, but it there is some night diving involved, so that's pretty good. Coolness, coolness. Yeah. So, all right. So those are just some movies. I, are there any other movies that come to mind um, that you've seen that are like you know what? That's a dive movie. The, there was one that I saw, and I cannot remember. It was um, it was uh, kind of like a European movie, but of course, it, it was it was like from England. So all the actors were English. You know, they right. had the accent and right. stuff. Um, I can't remember, but it was a really good movie, and it was about commercial diving. Uh, you know, to where they were like the you know, I think I saw something on one of the the dive boards about that, where they're actually in a. Um, they're in a diving bell. A bell, yes. yeah. They were in a diving bell, and uh, he goes and stays under past his uh, his. You know, of course the they're limits, gonna yeah, yeah they're gonna decompress, but <laughs> to save a person, he actually risks his own life to go out there and grab him and bring him, and it kind of goes into where they're inside of a. A diving bell. Once they get back to the surface, they're in a in a in a pressure tank, and you can, and that's pretty much where the movie takes place. But the pain that the guy's going through, oh, yeah. uh, where they're trying to um, decompress, yeah, um, it's you know, it's it's that's where the whole movie is. But it's it involves diving, but it's more in the commercial realm. Uh, but I can't, I cannot remember the name of the movie. But it's huh. a really good movie. Huh, um, I remember I I rented the movie when. Hollywood video was here. Oh gosh. Yeah, that was back, back in the that was back in the that's day. That's going back. Wow. 
So those are just some ideas, especially mm-hmm. uh, for those who do absolutely will not be caught in the water when it's cold. Uh, <laughs> those might be some movies to, to kind of go over just uh, to kind of whet your appetite for yeah. the season coming up. <laughs> I got a phone call uh, this week from a guy who I guess they live part time out here. They've got a place out uh, by Box Canyon. Oh, OK. He and his buddies mm. uh, do a lot of fishing, I guess. That we see a lot of that. Um, and they've always, he's been interested and his buddy said, you know, yeah, no, that'd be cool. Cool. Uh, interested in getting certified. And so, you know, I told him, I said, well, you know, we've got, we got classes that will start up, you know, end of April, beginning of May type of thing. But, uh, you know, and I explained the process, et cetera. So he was all interested. He didn't, he's like, well, you know, the money's no issue. Um, so, yeah, he said, he said, I'll probably have two, maybe even three buddies who want to go through the course. I'm like, yeah, it'll be oh, great. Cool. So our, we may already have a, a jump in class the, the first of the season here. So <laughs> he's, awesome. I said, well, just give me a call uh, whenever we get closer to that time, whenever you think you might want to start doing the self-study stuff. And then yeah. we'll just get the deposit and, and I'll get your materials to you, materials to you, and you can start doing the self-work, self-study work. Cool. So... All right, as we're starting to wind down here, I want to touch on a little bit of the tech news. We've got uh, uh, Windows 8 Pro, which, of course, uh, they officially released back in October um, for an, with an introductory price of 39 bucks. Well, guess what, kids? That's going to expire at the end of the month. So 1 February it goes up from $39 to 199 So here's the thing. <clears throat> if you think you might, if you're not going to be buying a new machine, but you think you might want to uh, to get when update your machine to Windows 8, but you're not necessarily ready to install it just yet, uh, you can always just purchase it online and then download it, burn it to a to a CD or DVD, mm-hmm. and then install it later. Yeah, uh, I've walked a number of people through that process, so at least you have it. You know, you get your your product key and everything, and so. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of money by doing mm-hmm. it that way. So if you think at all that you might be jumping into Windows 8 without and not buying a new machine, because most of your new machines are going to be coming with Windows 8, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it certainly would save you a huge amount of money yep. uh, to get it now. So that ends that that introductory price at thirty nine dollars ends uh, at the end of January. Um, I've been reading a lot about, uh, seems like the rumors are getting hot about an uh, iPhone 6 coming up in June. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> poor uh, uh, poor uh, iPhone users, like, I just got the 5 or, you know, just like, come on. But I guess they're feeling the, the, the push because uh, their stocks have been dropping dramatically. Yeah. I mean, they, they st- you still make a, t- if you own stock, you still are making buku uh, yeah, money. I mean, yeah, I mean it's, you're rich. So don't, yeah, exactly. Don't you're worry. just less rich. But uh, <laughs> but still, to see Apple stocks that that peaked at seven some seven hundred and something now down, pushing maybe even crossing below four hundred here. Pretty yeah, quick. actually they are below four hundred. <clears throat> are they really? Yeah. Um, they're uh, four sixty. Well, they're in the four hundreds. Okay. Uh, they're yeah. not below four hundred, but they're in the they're, they're below five hundred. Yeah. So they're in the four sixty, four seventy yeah. range. You Basically, know. the the analysts, the big wigs, you know, the people who look at this stuff and technology and everything, they're saying that they think that that the post Steve Jobs Apple has started to lose its steam. The the last pieces of stuff that that Steve Jobs was working on or had ideas for before he died have pretty much been out there and that uh, evidently a number of uh, a number of uh, little polls or studies or whatever are showing that with the youth I mean we're talking like teenagers the iPhones aren't or the the iPad is not the the thing they're actually People are seeing people's uh, kids show up with uh, Android tablets, and believe it or not, I'm, I was shocked by this one. They're showing up with a Surface, the Surface RT. Now, personally, I I'm not a fan of the Surface RT. I love the hardware and how it looks, but R, it's it's the Pro or nothing for me. I I don't want the RT. 
but those have evidently, uh, those are now cool, which kind of su surprised me. And then the other thing too, that's kind of hurting Apple is, you know, they came back to back with versions of the iPad and then they came out with the iPad mini. Mm -hmm. Evidently the, the Samsung and the other companies that are doing all the hardware for the, the full size iPad, they're trimming way back on that because the iPad mini is really is what is grabbing people's uh, focus. If you're going to get an iPad, people are gravitating towards the mini rather than the full size. One. I mean, you can get um, you can get the mini <coughs> with the actual data plan like through AT&T yeah. for like three hundred and forty nine dollars. Yeah. I mean, you cannot beat that, that is a great price. I mean, that's an awesome price. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the big one where you're going to pay. I think six hundred dollars yeah. or something like that, yeah. almost seven hundred for it, and <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. So you, yeah. it'd be better just to get the smaller one. And I've actually seen the small one, and it's it's actually um, it's it looks cute. I like it. It's <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> it's cute. I mean, I like it. I I I would. You see, the problem with tablets is a lot of they're they're big. And for certain for certain applications, uh, and I'm a tech guy that you're going to be doing out there. I don't want to pull out a huge iPad and then start, you know, but I don't mind pulling out the small little one. You know, it's not yeah. as uh, it's more discreet. Uh, you know, <coughs> like you go to concerts or you go to places and you see people taking pictures with your uh, with the iPad. It, it just seems kind of crazy. There go my neighbors. Is that the thumping I hear? Yes. Okay, I thought I was... I yes. Even through our seat. headsets, we can hear my neighbors with their stupid Tejano music blasting. Oh, yeah. Come eh. on now. So uh, It's after 9 o'clock. But Come anyway, um, so... Uh, and, yeah, they've cut back on the production of the parts and certain things because they're not moving these... Uh, not, in the, not nearly in the levels that they, they were, were anticipating. anticipating. Yeah. yeah. They're still selling... Yeah, just not at the levels that they were anticipating. It's the mini that's really. And I, I was reading somewhere that the whole thing about the iPhone six is just nothing but people starting uh, propaganda about it. That it, they don't have anything <coughs> ready. They don't. Oh have no anything no no! Set. And that's not what I'm not hearing that anything's even close to ready. But they've already, where the rumors are really floating around is. They're gonna. The, the rumors are that they are gonna do something. They're supposed to make a, a more inexpensive phone. Yeah. Yeah. But the other question is, are they going to look at changing the interface? Well, they let go of the uh, the main guys. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw that. Uh, I mean, Scott Forstall. I mean, yeah. he was the guy who invented the OS, the right. iOS, um, and they let him go because of the issues with the mapping. Yeah, uh, which was kind of a Don't. <laughs> big mistake. I mean, you know, and as far as the products, I for me, I mean, I love their computers. But as far as their small like their phones, their <coughs> smartphones and stuff, I, I'd like to see something really drastic. You know, I mean, you look at the iPhone, uh, not the iPhone. You look at the, the Windows phone right now. I mean, it's ca it's catchy. Some but, of them are. Yeah, some of them are just basically retreads from yeah <laughs> from the um, average. Phones, I, I think the the operating system on the phone is awesome. I'm still not sold on it on the actual desktop yet, but on the phone it looks pretty sharp. Yeah. I yeah. gotta admit that it looks cool. Um, the little live tiles and stuff like that. Um, it caught my son's attention, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but you know, he no longer lives with me. So <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Kicked him to the curb. Yeah, he now lives in the room behind. <laughs> I sent him to Siberia <laughs> with his phone. It was funny, but no, I mean, all joking aside, I do like yeah. the, uh, the interface. It looks cool, <coughs> but we'll see. I mean, who knows? Yeah. You never know. Yeah, never know. Something's so got to shake. I, 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 if nothing else, I think Microsoft taking a huge risk shook up the the industry mm -hmm. even even if we don't ever see them hit anywhere close to the numbers or percent market share that that android and and iphone have uh they they put everybody on notice that you don't have to do it the same way mm -hmm. you can do something wildly different and it actually sell devices and uh, the numbers are you know nokia's stock which has which was basically in the crapa 
uh, their stock went up. Has and of course, when you're talking small numbers, it's not hard to to go up really huge. But theirs went up over two hundred percent. I mean, it was huge. I mean, they've they have they've they've they're now on the upward climb. Uh, actually, the U.S. is the only market that they're still dragging their feet in. Everywhere else in the world, especially in China, they're just they're really taking off nicely. I mean, I mean, how far? I mean, when you've been a bottom dweller, I mean, anything is better than. Well, they can, you know, that <laughs> Nokia is a classic example of the Apple like uh, approach. If they keep this upward climb at the rate they're doing, you know, going from being the phone manufacturer in the world to, to almost nothing. losing it. Yeah. And now they're cl climbing back up. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple went ex through this, exactly this same yes, ride. Yes. So it just, it just remains to see if. If Nokia keeps, you know, I think that their, well, their support for their Windows Phone devices is bar none the best of any. They're the ones who've pushed their updates out and added more features to the devices as they go out. Far and away better than any other company. I, I don't care what platform you're talking about. If they keep that up, if they can keep that pace up, they're always going to be on the edge when it comes to the Windows phones. And I think their camera, if they keep pushing the camera advances the way they're going, their pure view, their actual pure view camera, not the one that's not the version that's in the in the, the phone, but their actual pure view camera is, is spectacular on every single level. There is no, there's no camera that can touch that without going into the professional cameras. Right. And... They're looking at more ways they can shrink even more of it and put more of that in there because their their camera is a forty one megapixel camera, and it does it, it's just amazing if they can if they can add more of those fe the features that are in that into their smartphones, that is going to be the hook because really what everybody's looking to do is have something that does all the stuff that they need to do with a smartphone, and eliminates the need to actually have. A separate camera and that's you know that's been the talk all <laughs> along is that they want to have one little platform why yep. why carry two things yep. when we can just excuse me put it right. all in one right right absolutely so um i i guess we'll wait and see what the uh the the next few the months two, 2013 is going to be an interesting and exciting uh, year for tech across the board i I, I honestly am still pro mac and i would think that they they will not fail they may come back a few steps but i think in the long run they're gonna have to come up with an awesome product and yeah. i'm pretty sure they're gonna pull something out of the rabbit hat but um they're I'm, probably gonna need to shake up their head gonna, shop a little bit more in order to do that because they're gonna have to get some fresh they're gonna have to come up stuff. some fresh ideas uh as far as the look and feel i think that's just uh, uh, uh yeah. an apple signature i think between I, I think basically the last couple of months the last few months google and and Apple have been have been feeding off of each other's expertise. In other words, they've been like stealing some of their talent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been yeah. interesting to watch. Well, the former Apple, whatever, is now working for Google, and former Google has been working for Apple. I'm like, you guys are stealing from each other. <laughs> you know, funny. they can't work together because it'd be right. a monopoly. So right. you know, <laughs> right? Exactly. The old Ma <laughs> Bell days. Now, on the other end of the spectrum. A company that I'd really never heard of, but I guess everywhere else they're well known as Hawaii or Huai. Or I'm not sure how you pronounce it. H U A W E I. They created the the Ascend W1, and they've already announced a W2 coming. But the the W1 is a Windows Phone. This is their first entry into it, and it is selling. Evidently, it's popular already. Just only being out a month, it's popular over in in the. Uh, the Asian arena, mm. but it's selling for $258. That's the buy off contract uh, outside of a contract. That's the, now, wow. now you're getting into the Android numbers there. Yeah. Now it is by no means a stellar device. You know, it's got the slower memory or slower processor, etc., cetera. Um, and smaller storage. But if you're wanting like a basic, get into the, to the smartphone and you are maybe not, looking at the android phone and price is the issue that one's probably going to be uh, a good starter you know flipping mm -hmm. from a feature phone to to a smartphone i was like 258 dollars really 
Most people can. Most people can afford something like that. I'm still waiting for the BlackBerry to come out. <laughs> <laughs> BlackBerry <laughs> Ten, folks. Just it's give gonna it up. Make, it's they gonna did. make yes, noise. Let me tell you. It's not gonna do anything. <laughs> it's not gonna do anything. That's right. Uh, R I M R I M is coming. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Windows Phone 7.8 is now rumored to start stage uh, stage rollout uh, at the end of January. Everybody been kind of waiting for that for the, those who are still holding on to your Windows Phone 7.5 devices. The 7.8 update is is uh, a pretty good size update that adds a number of the features that uh, you know the the more adjustable live tiles, etc. And some other features that are already in Windows Phone 8. So if you're holding on to your Windows Phone 7 device, uh, it looks like they've already shown up on a number of the servers for the OEMs. So a couple of companies, over, a couple of carriers overseas have already kind of accidentally tweeted, oh, we're, 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 it looks like we're going to roll end of January. So uh, it'll be kind of exciting to see how that roll goes. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, uh, an interesting thing here I wanted to show a picture on. 3D printing is getting really, really popular now. Yeah, Nokia. I there was an, uh, Did you see that Nokia did it? Yes. Actually, a couple of things. They've got... You can now get... They You can download the specs or plan or... I'm not sure how that works with 3D printing. Uh, to print 3D, your own custom battery cover for the Lumia 820, because those have interchangeable back yeah. colors, which they were selling like the <clears> different <throat> colors. You could just buy them or whatever. You could mix and match them. Um, but now they're like, oh, well, you know what? We're going to make the plans available. And so if you've got a 3D printer, you can now download those and print out, 3D print your own custom back. <laughs> and then on top of that, another company that does 3D printing of a number of different things They've actually created a 3D printed in custom colors uh, stand that you, if you've got, like me, if you've got the wireless charger, which I love that thing. It is so, <laughs> that is the greatest thing since sliced bread for me. Um, but you can now put that in to the, uh, you can see on this picture here, it fits right into the stand. So it's a nice little stylish stand that you can get in different colors. And so you can actually have it propped up. And these are going for about 30 bucks. Wow. I'm like, that is cool. I want one in purple. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's me. So I'm like, this is pretty cool. And of course, now they've been doing some little uh, tests with 3D printed, back to, bring us full circle, 3D printed guns. <laughs> yes. All the parts. 3D printed. Wow. Yeah. Now, they uh, they did 3D printing of a number of different weapons, you know, cradle to grave, and they got off like, I forget which, I think it was like a 223 rifle that got off like 30 shots before it basically started to melt. <laughs> I was like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose. It was basically a throwaway gun. Good grief. Do you hear that music? I do. I am so going to call the cops on these people. It's thumping. I'm going to call the cops on them. Yes, I'm that kind of neighbor. You don't want to stand in my yard. <laughs> Get out of my yard. But uh, um, no, and then also they've been doing, uh, a number of these companies have been doing some tests with like the high capacity wow. mags. Now those evidently are not holding up tremendously well yet. They've got to perfect whatever the, the printing uh, material mm -hmm. is but you know if they ban the sale of high capacity mags no problem i'll just, just print one i'll just print one um <laughs> i just tweeted uh, uh those of you that aren't following me at twitter which is you everyone. should be you, you should absolutely be. should be if you you're not be. you should be ashamed but uh anyway i just tweeted about the 3d printing from uh, apparently the nokia yeah they um they did some stuff with that. So pretty cool article. Read it, it is yeah. very, very cool stuff. But, you know, just 3D printing in general, that's going to open up a number of things. I've even read where they've been experimenting with 3D printing of body parts. Oh, wow. I mean, think about that. Uh, you need a custom body part, you know. Of course, we, you know, now we make all these, you know, like joint, hip joints, stuff like that. What if you could print a durable... Uh, 
bone graft or you know something that augments a piece uh, mm-hmm. you know something that that failed and you could just get all the measurements do the do the the MRI scan the full scan of your body and say okay to replace this part we can now print it out we they do something like that at the high school <coughs> they have the machine that does the three dimensional parts or printing uh, it's it actually prints or is it more like a lathe? It's more like a lathe, okay. but okay. it does it out of plastic. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. what it does, it, it kind of starts just eating away and yeah, you yeah. know, it, it's, it's really, yeah. Really the neat. difference there is you're starting with a block that cuts down to the thing as opposed to something that literally is laying it out layer. Like, by no, layer no, it's done. It. It's done layer to layer and it builds it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's really neat. Uh, Our school district can afford that. Well, it's actually through the current technical programs, which is the same guy who does the robotics. His name is uh, Brad Bellado. Wait a minute. We have a robotics deal at our school? Oh, it's huge. Huge. We've gone at to Del Rio High School. Yes, we've gone to competition already. It's been our, uh, in place for the last two years. I've got to see that. Yeah, there's <laughs> a, and I'll show you. It, it's phenomenal. That is cool. Um, the Bank and Trust funded the first robot, which actually threw basketballs. Yeah. <laughs> And um, the next, of course, it would be a sports robot. Um, and then the next one actually is some kind of a pressure gun. They use it out during the football games. It'll, you know, you stuff like a shirt or whatever, and it'll throw. Thunk, thunk. It'll just throw <laughs> the thing like. You know what? And that is like the techie version of what we all used to do as kids to people we didn't like. We'd take their, their t- we'd. Tra- we'd pin them down, take their tennis shoes off, tie them together, and then throw them around yeah. <laughs> the, the high wires. Um, but really neat <laughs> stuff. There's a lot of things going on in the uh, CTE department at the high wow. school. It's in the engineering. and uh, But, uh, yeah, his name Muy is... Muy uh, bueno. That's yeah, cool. but he, he actually did something for me. He created a... It's like a, a little picture, but he... Of course, he didn't start with a block. He started and it just it yeah. built it up into pla- from plastic. Yeah, it, and it's it's a three D. Cool. I mean, it takes a while to do it. But oh yeah, yeah. You um, know, that's the sad part. Making all these like three uh, D printed guns and gun gun parts. It takes so long to make them, and then they don't last very long. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> know that's disturbing. the problem. Yeah, yeah. All right, before we go, let's uh, we're at nine thirty three here, so let's hit our administrivia real quick. Dun, dun, dun. Next Del Rio Dive Club meeting is 21 Feb at Rudy's Restaurant. And, of course, again, reminding you, our Balmeray State Park trips. And if we line up the uh, the Texas Gulf Coast uh, dive trip and the uh, Valhalla missile silo trip, we'll, uh, we'll post those on here, too. We need to kind of get together and yes. brainstorm dates, potential yeah. dates for that. But anyway, our Balmeray State Park trips are May 17th through 19th, June 14th through 16th, July 19th through the 21st, and our anniversary weekend, <laughs> August 16th through 18th. And we would love to see you there. You'd have such a great time. It's You talk about some easy diving there, but it's a beautiful area, great camping, and just have a great time eating lots of food and <laughs> and having those gr- those bluebell grizzlies. <laughs> <laughs> the bluebell grizzlies. <laughs> Got to have those grizzlies. Got to have the grizzlies. That was so awesome. So uh, I don't think I have anything else for this week. How about you? No, I'm done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're we're done. Stick a fork in us. We're done. <laughs> we'll catch you on the flip-flop there, good Betty. So uh, until next week, we will see you on another episode of Two, Two Guys, Guys Who, Who Dive. Dive. Good night.